Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today we have two ZX Spectrums with pretty bad image quality. Actually, I take it back. This one has absolutely horrible image quality. So join me today as we investigate why this happens and what we can do to fix it. Hello? 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 I was initially restoring this ZX Spectrum when I noticed this really bad image quality. Now, this is not this way because the video is through RF. If we did the composite video mod, it would be just as bad. I had seen this before and I thought this would make a great video showing how to fix this because it happens a fair amount with these old ZX Spectrums. Interestingly, right after that, I actually found another ZX Spectrum with even worse image quality. That's pretty much hard to even read. And again, if we did the composite mod, it would be just as bad. And actually, a little later, I want to try it again and it wasn't just bad image quality, it was resetting itself and doing this weird loading noise and then resetting itself again. So this one shows you that if you have this kind of bad image quality, it will eventually keep getting worse and then the computer will start failing just like this one. Okay, so this is the first spectrum that we looked at, the one with the bad image quality, but that is actually working. And let's start checking the 12 volt line at the chip that generates the video signal. So that is in pin 12. And okay, what we're seeing right now in the oscilloscope is this 12 volt signal that is in AC coupling mode. So that means that we're ignoring the DC component of the signal and we're only showing the changes. So we're only showing the ripple. And I'm doing this so we can zoom in and see the signal reasonably well. So ideally, this should be completely flat. Um, that is never going to be the case, but there's quite a bit of a ripple here. If, if I pause it here, we see that there's almost, it's going almost all the way to 500 millivolts. So it's uh, that's almost half a volt. That's probably enough to cause that kind of bad video signal that we were seeing earlier. Now let's look at the 12 volt line, but at the DRAM. Now that those 12 volts are generated by the same voltage circuitry, but they're decoupled from the videos from the video chip with a couple capacitors, mostly because I think the RAM itself introduces a fair amount of noise. Uh, but let's see. So the ideal one should again be completely flat, but yeah, so there's a lot more variation there. There's a lot more amplitude in this kind of noise. This board was working, so clearly this is within the acceptable parameters of uh, variation in the 12 volt line, but uh, there's definitely quite a bit of noise there. Now let's have a look at the other board, the one that had really horrible image quality and kept resetting constantly. So let's start the same way and look at the 12 volt line at the video chip. And huh, surprisingly, that's pretty similar to the other one. Uh, yeah, that's about 400 millivolt amplitude. I, honestly, I expected it to be higher than that given that the video looked significantly worse. Now let's look at the 12 volt line at the DRAM. And yeah, that one, that one is definitely worse. I mean, that's, that's almost like one and a half to two volt difference. So that could easily account for the board resetting itself every few seconds. Uh, it's probably trying to access RAM and it's reading the wrong values because the RAM just got reset or just gives garbage values back. So yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely much worse than the other one. So let's look at some of the other voltages in the DRAM of the spectrum because it uses three different kinds of voltages. The 12 volts that we just saw it has five volts, which is common across the board, and also minus five volts. Let's look at minus five, which is in pin one. And well, I mean, considering what we just saw with the 12 volt line, this looks pretty okay. And the five volts I expect it to be better because that's probably coming from the voltage transformer uh, over there. So that should be probably pretty steady. Yeah, it's pretty similar to the to the minus five. 
This is a ZX Spectrum from my collection and it looks different, but this is just the original case. The inside is exactly the same. It's probably a different issue, but we'll be able to use it as a reference for the voltages and we can compare it to the faulty spectrums. Okay, let's compare voltages on this board that we know is working and had the capacitors replaced recently. All right, let's start with the 12 volts and the video chip. So that's what we have. And that seems better than what we had in the other in the other boards. Okay, let's check the 12 volt line at the DRAM. And that's much better than what we had before. This is somewhat similar to what we're seeing on the video chip itself. The Spectrum power supply is 9 volts with center negative, actually, which is a little unusual. So where do all these voltages come from? For that, we need to look at the voltage generation circuitry, which is all in the right hand side of the board. This circuit is actually almost identical from the earliest issues of the Spectrum all the way up until the Spectrum plus two gray. It's also a very fragile circuit, so it tends to break a lot whenever something is plugged in incorrectly in the expansion port, or maybe an incorrect power supply is connected to the Spectrum. So it's something that comes up a lot in Spectrum repairs. First of all, the Spectrum generates 5 volts from the 9 volt power supply through a voltage regulator. It's a 7805. It's a very standard voltage regulator. The only downside it has is that it generates quite a bit of heat. So the temperature goes up inside of the Spectrum and it tends to negatively impact the chips. It shortens their lifespan as well as ends up degrading the keyboard membrane. So one of the recommendations that I have is to change that voltage regulator with a modern one that doesn't generate heat. You can check out the link in the corner to the video I did about that a while ago. Apart from the 5 volts, the Spectrum also needs plus 12 volts and minus 5 volts. And those are generated in the voltage generation circuitry. It looks fairly complex and to be honest, it's a little bit out of my area of expertise. I can't say that I can look at a bunch of analog electronics like this and instantly tell you what it is, but we can try to make sense out of it at a high level. So the two transistors, TR4 and TR5, along with a coil, represent an inverter circuit. So an inverter is a circuit that takes a DC voltage and generates an analog voltage. A place where you may hear about voltage inverters nowadays is in solar panels because they transform the DC voltage generated by the solar cells into AC voltage that we can use in the household. So in this case, the inverter circuit takes the 9 volts of the input and the 5 volts, and it generates a 12 volts pulsating signal. That signal is then rectified through a couple of diodes and a capacitor, and that generates a pretty stable 12 volt signal. So that 12 volt signal is what goes to the DRAM. Then there's an extra little filter to decouple it from any noise that is generated in the DRAM. And those new 12 volts are then used for the video chip because there we want to have as little noise as possible. And we just saw what happens when you get some noise in there. Then in the bottom side of the circuit, it does kind of a very similar thing with a couple of diodes and some capacitors, and it generates a stable minus five volts DC. There are a couple of places in the voltage circuitry that are worth looking into a little bit more closely. One of them is the collector of TR4. So that's kind of the output of the inverter part of the circuit, and that's where the 12 volt pulsing signal comes out. I'm saying it's interesting to look at it because it can give an indication about the health of the circuit in general and because it has a very distinctive shape to the signal. There it is. There you can see the 12 volt oscillating signal. As you can see, it's a little bit of an odd shape. It peaks at 15, then it drops down a little bit to 12, then it drops down. It actually seems like it oscillates a little bit and then it goes down to zero. Uh, so it has a very distinctive shape to it. At the base of TR4, you see this other signal that is also very distinctive. It's this ramp up in two different steps, um, mostly negative. And again, you should look for this to be about this shape when everything is working correctly. The shape of these signals is important enough that even the service manual back from 1983, I imagine, had a whole page devoted to them, including some diagrams hinting at least at the shape that the technicians should expect to see in the oscilloscope. 
If we look at TR4 on the second spectrum, the one that's not working well at all, we actually see that the signal at TR4 is a little different. It actually looks really healthy, it's nicely defined and it's sharp, but it oscillates a lot more. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, it's just that I think the reason this looks different is because this is an issue 6, whereas the other one that we just saw was an issue 4B. And looking at the collector, again, we see somewhat similar, but there is that oscillation at the beginning and then the ramp. But I believe they both look perfectly fine, and this is what you expect to see in this revision of the board. At this point, it's pretty clear that there's a fault in the voltage generation circuitry, and it's definitely not the transistors. Those seem to be working just fine. So it's most likely the capacitors, which often fail if they've been exposed to a lot of heat and just a lot of use in general. So let's replace those with brand new capacitors and measure those voltages again, and then see if we get better image quality. We could just replace the capacitors involved in the voltage generation circuitry, but really, chances are if these are faulty, the other ones are not much better off. And in particular, these two tend to fail a lot, and when they fail, then the 5 volt supply is not even steady, so these two are crucial to the operation of the spectrum. So whenever I change the capacitors, I just go ahead and recap the whole board. And here's the board with all the new capacitors. So before we do anything else, let's check out the voltages that we saw had all the ripples and variations earlier. So let's start with the video. 12 volts should be right there. And yeah, remember how that one used to vary quite a bit. And then the memory one was the worst one. This varied by a volt and a half. And yeah, I mean, it varies more. This is this is probably the noise introduced by the DRAM itself, but it's much more reasonable. This is about 500 millivolts or a little bit more. So definitely way better than it was before. So here are the capacitors that came out of the board, and uh, some of them are pretty damaged, like they're peeling. It doesn't mean that the inside is bad, but chances are it means that it went through a lot of heat or you know, things like that. Let's actually test them. Uh, I know this tool is not extremely accurate, but if they're as bad as I think they are, we're, we're going to see it. So let's start with the 100. By the chart here, if this is good, we should see, so this is 125 volts, so we should see something lower than 0.32 in order for it to be good, and it's 2.6. That's really, really, really bad. That's like many levels up from where you're supposed to be. So this is totally not working. And let's try a 22 microfarad one. So this is 22 microfarad, 25 volts as well. So we should see something lower than 2.1. And the answer is, yeah, double that. So. They're really bad. Uh, they clearly were responsible for all the problems we're seeing on that board. The bad image quality, the resetting, and all of that. And finally, the moment of truth. It's definitely not perfect, but we have to remember this is coming out of an RF video out. For a better test, let's compare the video quality now to the video quality of this same computer before we change the capacitors. And wow, what a difference. I honestly think that the video quality right now is as good as it's going to get without making a composite video mod like we did a few videos ago. So both ZX Spectrums are working and they have much better image quality even through RF. So watch out for that if you ever encounter that kind of image quality. Now you know how to fix it by changing the capacitors. So I hope the video was useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next video, see you then.